Bushcraft 412. And I just got done uploading the uh, kind of my little uh, op-ed video on the Trayvon Martin case. And just like within like literally two minutes, I got two personal messages kind of asking me to expand on uh, my little self-defense story. And, you know, I decided why not? You know, typically I don't reveal hardly any personal information, uh, mostly because of the nature of my job. I work a job that is under public scrutiny and, you know, we are basically not allowed to do any kind of uh, social media stuff that will bring attention to my employer, um, especially anything to do with, <clears throat> excuse me, guns or Second Amendment or anything that could be controversial. So, of course, I typically don't show myself on videos. There are one or two where you see a little bit of a, a little bit of me. Um, but I don't show myself and I don't give any information as to exactly where I live and what I do. But, you know, if anyone's really that interested, they can always just ask and I will talk with them privately. Uh, but I don't put it out there. Well, my story of uh, self-defense happened before I had a channel a little over a year ago. I uh, was out working and sometimes in my employment I'm forced, well not forced, but I, I'm out on the streets in a, in a fairly large urban city in the evening hours and I'm often in people's homes and in people's homes in a way where they don't want me there so I often face a lot of negative feedback from my clients let's just put it that way to kind of be political about it and often when I show up into certain neighborhoods I am obviously not welcome and this particular day, I was working, and it was later in the evening, <clears throat> and I pulled up to a particular neighborhood where I had some business to do, and I saw a couple guys on the street, and they were, you know, they just looked like they were up to no good, and, you know, I kind of, and when I pulled up to the car, I made sure I pulled away from them and didn't, you know, pull up near to them, and I kind of sat in my car for a second just to make sure there wasn't going to be, you know any problems. I just wanted to kind of see what they were doing. Next thing I know, these guys are, are running up to my car and they literally almost pulled me out of my car. They reached in, got the door open, were able to grab me and were trying to yank me out of my car. And of course, what did I have to defend myself with? You know, did I have my normal work issue pepper spray? Nah, didn't have that with me. Did I have a nice defensive EDC blade that I could whip out and use? Nah. Did I have something unconventional like one of these cold, she, uh, cold steel uh, pocket sharks that I could use as a uh, impact weapon? Nope. Oh, but surely I must have been carrying. You know, I'm such a big advocate of the Second Amendment. Where was my pistol? Nah, eh, at home. I learned the hardest lesson in life, which is when you are on the streets and something bad happens and you have to rely on yourself it's never a good thing now in this case these gentlemen as we're going to call them were attempting to yank me out of my car and were hitting me and, and i'm not sure if their intention was a carjacking or a robbery or whatever their intention was but i was able to before getting out of the car able to put the car back in drive and even though I was kind of half in, half out of the car, was able to drive away and get away from them. Of course, these people chased after my car, and I literally had to drive like five or six blocks to get away from these people. And I'll tell you one thing, guys. You know, you guys may think you're tactical ninjas. You may think you're badasses and that you train and you carry every day and you've got the best EDC out there and, you know, you're this manly man and you're tactical and cool and all that. I'll tell you what. No matter how badass you think you are, when something like that happens to you, you are a panicky, scared little kid. And I'll tell you another thing. Dialing a phone when you are panicked is the hardest thing on earth. It took me literally like a minute to dial 911. And then the police response after telling them that I was, you know, attacked, it took the police about six minutes to get to me. And... After I got home and kind of had time to process this whole incident and how close I came to getting severely hurt or maimed or whatever these guys' intention was with me, that's when I kind of reevaluated 
my life and said, you know what? I really need to be carrying something with me every day. Now, my work does not allow me to carry anything but this. I can only carry pepper spray for work. That's a fact of life. Now, do I carry my pepper spray every day at work? No, I don't. Should I? Yes. But I don't. Now, can I carry the gun? Absolutely not. Can I carry a knife? Not supposed to, but very easy little thing to hide. Can I carry something like this? No, but who's going to know the difference? You know, most of the people would have no clue what that was if they saw it and would just think it's a marker. So this incident, of course, forced me to reevaluate re my EDC. And now I do tend to carry items that are concealable. Um, of course, a year ago I didn't have this, but now I have the Colt Tactical Pen. I carry this with me every day because it is an improvised impact weapon. I do tend to carry a pocket knife close to every day. There are certain days where I have to go to court as part of my job, and I can't bring a knife in with me to court. Likewise, I can't bring certain things in with me to court, so certain days I can only bring maybe something like this, which... You know, of course, the people at the court who are putting you through the metal detector have never said one word about that or even considered it to be a weapon or said anything to me about it. So I'm very limited in what I can bring. But you know what? Even outside of work now, I find myself carrying multiple defensive items. A good knife, maybe pepper spray, and maybe an impact tool. I don't always carry a pistol. Why? Because New York State has a limitation on well, not New York State, my county has a limitation on carry conceal. So I can only carry conceal under certain circumstances. Yes, it sucks. New York's a horrible state. I wish I could move, but I can't. You know, so I cannot always legally carry. And I'm not going to carry illegally. Why? Because if I get caught carrying illegally, I lose my right to have this. And I'm never going to risk that. So I only carry my gun legally within the limits of my carry conceal. So, with that said, you know, I often have to rely on other items. And in some of my older videos where I've talked about EDC, people are like, oh, pepper spray is not going to do you any good. You should be carrying a Glock 45, and because a 45 is the only thing that will ever save your life. And, you know, it's a, you know, you can't always carry a gun. There's certain professions, certain things, certain places you just can't carry. And you need to get kind of a little bit creative in order to, to protect yourself, because in the end... Anything can happen at any time. You can go to the gas station and get robbed. You can go to the bank and have you know someone rob the bank while you're in there. You could have something happen at Walmart. All kinds of crazy stuff happens day in, day out. And your EDC is your only barrier between you and that chaos. And it took me having to go through that incident to figure that out. How important the EDC is. And how important it is that you have an EDC you can actually use. Because I'll tell you what... When you are panicked and fighting for your life, you are not very good at dealing with safeties. You are not very good at opening knives. You are not very good at dialing phones or even using pepper spray. Panic is a horrible, horrible thing. And even with a lot of practice, these things are still, the, the flood of adrenaline is incredible. And you just wouldn't believe how hard it is to think straight because of all that panic and adrenaline and everything going on in your head. So it really does pay when you have things like these to practice with them and make sure that you have such a good muscle, muscle memory built up that even in a state of panic, you're going to be able to use these items. Now, my case, of course, I walked away with just a few scratches, a little bit of torn clothing, no major injuries. The police, on the other hand, didn't really care. They wrote a quick report and that was it. My employer didn't care. They just wrote up an incident and that was that. Don't, you know, be more careful next time was their advice. Nothing changed. Nothing, you know, the world goes on. In the end, are the police going to, you know, patrol that neighborhood I was in more because of my attack? No. They're busy. They don't have time for that. That neighborhood's not going to be any safer. Nothing's going to change. My job isn't going to change their policies about carrying weapons. Nothing's going to change there. The only change that's going to be had in this situation is with me and my EDC and taking my personal protection seriously. And to sum this all up, you know, when I see a case like this Trayvon Martin case where people are 
questioning self-defense and what it takes to defend yourself and what rights you have to defend yourself, I've just got to say this to those people. If you haven't had to defend your life, you should shut the hell up. Because I have, I don't know what would have happened to me in my situation, but I know how scary that was. And you know what? If this guy overreacted, so be it. You know, if it was a crime, he'll have to pay that consequence. But I know one thing for certain, and one thing is an absolute certainty. I know as a result of this situation, if that were to ever happen to me again and I were attacked and I were to shoot and kill someone, if I were to do a little jail time, it would be far superior to being dead. And I know that to be a fact, and I know that in my heart, and I know that if the situation were to ever happen to me again and I were to have to take someone's life, as much as I would regret it and not enjoy it, I know my preference would be to al be alive and in jail than to be dead at some thug's hands. So with that said, you know, I hope this, this uh, Trayvon Martin case doesn't sour people's idea of self-defense and make them afraid to use force because, you know, you only do get one life in this world. And until you've had that time where you're, you're kind of forced to fight for your life, you really don't know what it feels like to feel that powerless and, and out of control. And I hope you guys think about this stuff and, and think about this stuff when you're watching all the news on this case and everything that's going on that, you know, these things do happen. And it happens every day. And not all of them make it in the news.